what up Kayla's crew and welcome to Kayla's Eat and Greet. So today I wanted to start the vlog with some food because I'm hungry. I don't know about you guys. So um, I've been having a couple of rough days. I would say three di the last three days I have been craving some bad things for me. Some, you know, t uh, <laughs> things that have probably bad oils in them or things that have like simple carbs. I've just been craving. Like the main things I've been craving, I'll tell you. Sushi. The chicken and cheese wrap from Ramshorn, and what was the third thing? Indian food. And I don't think Indian food would be that bad for me other than the naan bread, but I know there are places that do like whole wheat naan. I think they call it something else. Um, sushi has got a bunch of white rice, which I don't prefer for my diet because the blood sugar spike. And then the chicken and cheese wrap from Ramshorn is just, I don't know what they fry the chicken, not fry, but like, you know, pan fry the chicken in. There's the white flour tortilla wrap. So I found a place that makes sushi and they offer brown rice, which I know you're not supposed to do. Like apparently like sushi rice is like, it needs to be perfect. Like, I don't know, but you know, I miss sushi and I don't want to eat white rice. So this is a perfect compromise for me. I'm not a huge brown rice fan in general, but I think with sushi, it might be good. So they give me a little soy sauce. I might not be using all of that or any of that. Oh, I got two rolls that I want to try. Oh my goodness. They're beautiful. Let me open this up and show you a little bit better. Oh my gosh. So the one on, I don't know what is your right and left because I don't know if this is backwards. This one here is called the crazy roll it has tuna white fish and salmon and then it's all wrapped up in the rice and seaweed with a little bit of uh, fish egg like roe or something so that sounded perfect for me i love just love a variety of raw fishes this one was called the ruby roll and it has i don't even remember i think it has white tuna avocado maybe cucumber and then it's topped with regular tuna so that's the ruby roll. I am super excited for both of these. I don't know how much of this I can eat or will eat, but let's let's try it. I really want to try this crazy roll. So these are a couple big ones. Let me get a smaller. So yeah, here this is again. The brown rice, you can definitely tell it's brown rice. It's not looking as uh, pristine, <laughs> but I don't think I'm gonna care. I really don't. God, it smells amazing. Mm. <laughs> I missed sushi so much. All right, let's try the ruby roll. Here we go. Mmm. Mmm. Fantastic. Mmm. Mmm. There is cucumber in that one, just so you guys know. Damn. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy this. I'm so excited. There's definitely a little bit of a difference with the brown rice. It's not as, like, sticky. But otherwise, I don't really taste a difference. And I, it's fine. Like, I think this is just as good as the regular sushi and much more of a complex carb. So it won't spike my blood sugar as much. Later on in this video, I'm going to talk about another video that really is cool um, from Bobby Parrish. I know I haven't put him as a video of the week yet on my channel just because I just I really haven't had time. A lot of the videos that I've done recently are like longer. I didn't have time for a video of the week. But um, here, let's put a little bit of wasabi on this. I'm just using my fingers, guys. I think that's how you're supposed to eat sushi. Actually, I don't know. Maybe the nigiri, nigiri is how you're supposed to eat with your fingers, but... Oh, I love the smell of wasabi and the taste of it. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. It's actually like really mild. It has that wasabi like bite to it, but I could probably put more on it because I put like maybe this, this much. And it just added that little bit of wasabi sharpness without being like, ah, you know? <laughs> so yeah. I'm going to sit here and enjoy these. Actually, let's do one in soy sauce. I know, like, I need to watch my sodium just because blood pressure stuff, but whatever. 
Um, just do a little light dip. Okay, that was a lot, but let's try it. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> so we're going to do some fun things this week. I have a, a nice time planned for us and just do some things that um, are, a little, are a little bit different that I haven't done yet before on my channel. So stay tuned guys and I'll see you in the next section of my vlog. For the video of the week, I wanted to choose this one um, because Bobby Parrish is who I've been following to basically better myself, better my eating habits. He knows so much about ingredients, what they are, um, and just, <laughs> my cat, and just, um, he, he's just great. So uh, this video in particular I wanted to show you guys. Um, let me play a little bit of it for you. I've been wearing this for the last 30 days. It's a glucose monitor and it sends all the results to my phone so I can track exactly how my blood sugar has been reacting to the different foods I've been eating for the last 30 days plus. And it's been a lot of fun because I've been putting this thing to the test. If you follow me on Instagram or Facebook stories, I've been eating high carb meals, low carb meals, complex carbohydrate meals because for the last X amount of years, I mean, heck, I've been making videos on YouTube for 10 years. But I've been saying, if you're diabetic, you want to eat complex carbs in moderation. Well, I thought I should actually put that to the test and say, at least for my own body, right? Yours might be different. Is what I'm saying true? If you do eat low carb, does it have a minimal spike on your blood sugar? If you eat high carb, how does that affect your glucose? If you eat complex carbs, how does that affect your glucose? So I tracked it for the last 30 days plus. I'm going to show you what I eat share the results and break down some info. So let's walk around and show you exactly what I ate. So yeah, that's the gist. Um, if you guys are interested in health stuff and making sure you put the best ingredients in your body, then definitely check out Bobby Parrish's page. I will link both his page and this video down in the description box below. Hey, you guys wanna see something gross? I'm going to show you something real gross. This is a raw baby octopus. I'm cooking some of these up. I'm going to do a little taste test for you. Oh, this one's big. And I also have something else that's going to be, I'll just keep it a surprise because I'm so excited. It's so rare here, I feel like. I've never seen it served anywhere, sold anywhere. Found a cool website. I'll share it with you guys. Um, but this is going to be my review of the week. Some like weird... Um, exotic food so had to show you that I'm gonna wash my hands now so I have some water boiling here with uh, about a fourth of a cup of soy sauce just for a little bit of seasoning I do have some bay leaves in here some black telecherry peppercorns and some just whole cloves of garlic and this is what I'm gonna cook my seafood in I'm gonna show you guys me putting in the uh, octopus as soon as this is coming to like a rolling boil. show you guys what I am trying out today for the first time in my entire life and then I'll stack these boxes up so you guys can actually see the food but the first thing I got was Musang King Durian and this is from Malaysia so um triple-a durian frozen it was frozen so it doesn't unfortunately come in the shell which is actually really cool um it doesn't come in the shell so uh, I also got this which I've been curious about for so long abalone which i see a lot of uh, my favorite korean mukbangers eating abalone so it must be super popular over there but i have never seen it served in america like um but i was able to get this online so i'm really excited to try that supposedly it's like a delicacy or something and then this is something i just got from the store and i'm like oh it'd go perfectly with this meal is octopus i think you guys were there when i got that went to the market 
Um, so those three things. And then I also got from that website that I was on because I had never heard of it before and I saw it and I'm like, all right, <laughs> fried dace with salted black beans. It's like a canned, kind of reminds me of like a sardine. You know what I mean? So I don't know really how to eat that, but I might just like pop one in my mouth. <laughs> so let me stack up these boxes and show you guys what I have. Okay, that's a little better. So back here I have my octopus that you guys saw. It did not take long to cook. It actually looks super well cooked. Not like too well done. It feels soft still. I don't like it super tough, like chewy. These are the abalones. These also did not come in the shell, but I'll show you over here what that looks like. This is just the meat. Um, kind of weird looking. Honestly, when I said the shell, it kind of reminds me of like a vagina. And then here's the durian. And over here, I just have the canned fish. So... First things first. Oh, I didn't grab uh, chopsticks, but you know what? I'm gonna try the durian first because it's next to this hot food and I don't want it to get like hot. So I'm gonna try it while it's still cold. Feels very weird. Feels like slimy and soft. And this was frozen, so I thawed it out and you kind of see it just looks, it doesn't really look like fruit. It kind of looks like bread or something, but it smells like super strong oniony. I was telling Bud, it smells like a, like an onion, like a cheese and onion pierogi. Okay, I'm gonna just take a bite. There's a seed in here too, so. What? Ooh, what? Okay. It tastes like an onion cheesecake. That is the weirdest taste, and the texture is like, the texture is literally like cheesecake. It's like very creamy. It's kind of like, you might see me making a face because it's kind of gross to eat, but it, like the taste is kind of good. Hmm. Let's get to down to the seed. I don't hate it. I actually really like it. It's growing on me. <laughs> um... It's just like cream. It's like you're eating a like pudding. It's like pudding, the texture. And then it has a weird like sort of oniony flavor to it, but also like sweetness. I don't know. Very strange, very hard to explain. <laughs> Let's try one of these abalones. These seem really tough. Maybe they're overcooked. I don't know. I did have to throw them in with the uh, octopus. These were pre-cooked though, so I probably overcooked them. Texture similar to, it's like in between octopus and I mean, it's really similar to octopus. It's a less tough flavor. It's not super strong or anything, but I am picking up the hints of like the bay leaves and the garlic that I put in there. Mmm, I like it. Yeah, if it's not supposed to be like super tough like that, it's not super tough, but if it's not supposed to be tough, I probably did overcook it, but I still like it. Um, <laughs> octopus time. So it kind of like, you know how there was a head and I was holding it and the legs came down from the head? The head's like on upside, it's kind of like turned inside out on itself. I think it just does that when it cooks. So I'm going to cut off like a little leg. And give it a shot, give it a try. I hope I cooked it enough. Like I don't want to, you know die here of I don't know what you can get from a not cooked enough octopus but tentacle I want to show you guys the tentacles that's really cool looking doesn't that look really good mm. that's actually out of this world so good not overcooked at all. It makes me think like whenever I've had octopus before, has that been co overcooked? Or I just straight up undercooked this. Mm. This one's smaller, it's a little bit easier to handle. Let me just chomp on this one. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Super good. So the website that I got most of this stuff from, again, I didn't get the octopus from there, but I'm sure they have, yeah, they do have baby octopus. So you could get all of this stuff from that website. Oh, remind me, I gotta, I gotta try this too. But I'll put the website right here and you just go there, browse. It delivered to me in two days. And I think they deliver from New Jersey. So, but that's still like pretty good, you know? Usually if you're getting any of this kind of stuff, like I was looking up prices for durian and it was like $400 or like $150, depending on what kind you got and how big. And yeah, this doesn't have the cool shell, but it's also easier to eat because it's just open already. <laughs> very good price. I can't remember what it was, but it was this very good price. So we have our fried dace with salted black beans. And luckily it has a little opener thing. So weird. Weird. It doesn't smell super fishy or anything, but you could definitely tell it's fish. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this, thing, this whole thing open. But I hope it's pouring out some of the sauce. But that's what we got here. So it kind of looks like it's skin on fish. And supposedly it has bones in it, but you're supposed to be able to eat those. But they're like softened or like you can eat them. So I'm just going to pull. Yeah. Wow. That's weird. That is so weird looking. Sorry. I'm going to try to show you guys if I can get this out. Okay. This is a piece of it. I think the fish is whole. It just looks so creepy. I'm just going to pop it in my mouth. Mmm. I actually, I'm trying to decide if I want to use the word like or love. I like that. That flavor is amazing. Um, it's not too salty like a sardine. It does creep me out like here. Let me show you the bones. Oh, here's like the spinal cord. Oh, they are softened. There's like a spinal cord. Yeah, you can just eat it. Oh, and the black beans. So it's on top of some black beans. I wonder how you're supposed to eat these. Like, you just put them on, like, as a topping on pizza or just eat them out of the can or stir fry them. I don't know. There we go. I'm trying to open this more so I'm going to show you the whole package. There we go. Oh, how creepy does that look? Oh my gosh. Got one more bite of this. I actually really like it. Yeah, it's like a whole ass. <laughs> it's like a whole ass fish. Mm. Really oily though. Flavor is so good. I can't like place it to something or compare it to anything, but it remi it reminds me of like something. Something really good. Mmm. Well, this was my exotic food day. Um, I'm probably going to like finish the octopus and probably the, some, most of the abalone. I think I'm done with the durian just because like it does have a bit of sugar, like quite a bit of sugar in it. So I don't want to overdo it on that. I just really wanted to try it. And yeah, this is going to be my lunch for today around five o'clock in the afternoon. Just wanted to share that experience with you guys. It was very interesting and very pleasant. I'm glad I didn't hate anything actually pleasantly was surprised with everything so all right thank you guys and i will see you in the next section of the vlog so i am currently on my way to sportland of westland sportland or something like that it's a go-kart racing track it's a, a mini golf course and batting cages that's what i'm going for <laughs> so that's something i haven't done on my channel i wanted to go uh, to the batting cages with you guys um i randomly started thinking about like what kind of things i would want to do once i get in like a lot better shape um and i was like it would be really cool to join the softball league again because i used to play softball when, when i was a kid i was really good um the last time i played softball was in 2019 with a work group that did they had a softball league um like all the girls at my work um and i was really bad <laughs> so i 
know that I'm rusty, but also I was really just in bad shape. So it was like mostly just a, a response time thing. Like if I was, you know, I'm playing second base or something, the ball was coming to me. It was like, oh shit, I gotta go that way. And it was, it was tough. Um, I could hit still, but running to the base, first base was tough. I only got one hit where um, I was able to make it to the base. Like I hit the ball a lot, but I never made it to first base. I was always out, but I did it. I did it one time because I hit it so well. <laughs> I had enough time to get to first base. Then I got a pinch runner in for me. <laughs> but yeah, um, I want to practice my batting and see, you know, that's the thing I was always really good at. And I just want to keep that up if it's something I want to do in the next probably like two to three years. Once I get like really in shape, I would love to join just like a um, local uh, softball team. So, um, yep, we're headed to Sportway and I'll see you guys when we get there. Take a little breather. I don't know if you can hear me. It's kind of that machine's kind of loud, uh, spewing out the balls. Uh, started off a little rough. It's a lot harder than I remember. This is the slow softball setting, so pretty easy peasy, but it's still hard for me. A little bit out of breath right now. It gives you 12 pitches in a row. I did two rounds worth. I got three more coins, so take a quick breathe and I'm gonna keep going. six coins worth I don't remember you guys can count probably from what you saw I'm gonna include the whole clip I know there's a couple of moments where it was super loud there were people like right behind the camera and they probably batted the camera a little bit by opening the other door so I might cut those out uh, but yeah I don't know how much you could have heard of me um, I was kind of making comments the whole time like oh damn or like oh I swung too high or oh that was a line drive um, I don't know how much of that you could have heard uh, maybe I'll fast forward through a lot of it but it was so fun um, yeah, started out kind of rough, got a little bit better. I think the main thing, I can hit the ball. It's very inconsistent with what I do with it. Um, some of them are just popping up. Some of them are going like, you know, a little bit. Some of them are ground balls because I'm, I'm swinging too high a lot. And then some of them are just like sweet spot. I need to work on knowing where that sweet spot is, being able to control that. Is that a thing? And then also a little more power. I feel like even when I have the sweet spot hits, um, it's not really going that far. It's, it's a nice hit and it probably would get me to first base, but 
I need to work on power, just strength. So, God, I had so much fun. I'm, I'm done though. I'm sweat. I don't know if you can see. S sweating like crazy. It's actually a nice day out. It's about 72 degrees. Very overcast, cloudy though. It has a 15% chance of rain today. Last time I was here, it rained. Last time I was here was for my 30th birthday. We did this. Uh, Batty Cage is here before we went out to do karaoke. So that was my 30th, four years ago. It's the last time I did karaoke in a public place, I think. Because I always used to do it for my birthday. But yeah, we came here. This is like an awesome time here. You probably hear the pirate music because the whole miniature golf course is pirate themed. So hopefully that doesn't copyright me. I feel like that's probably like copyright free music anyway. <laughs> So you're gonna get a little pirate theme to this section of the vlog, but that was so fun. I'm gonna come here like maybe once a week, once every couple weeks. So even if I had never joined a softball league again, it's just fun to do this. Um, that was my exercise for the day, guys. That was tough. <laughs> Thanks for coming along with me. Um, I would do some miniature golf, but I am very exhausted. So I'm gonna call it here for this, for this day. So see you guys tomorrow. not turn out like I expected or like I wanted so just so you guys know if it looked a little subpar I agree um it was supposed to be like a shrimp mac and cheese like sort of healthy but um it turned into just like a buttery noodle with shrimp <laughs> so I'm gonna go with that still looks amazing I'm still gonna eat it um I don't think I had enough cheese for the amount of pasta I made I'm like this is meal prepping 
these are actually not bad for you. Um, here, let me, guys, let me show you guys a bite. Yeah, not too terrible for you. Mmm. Like I told you, this week I've been like really craving stuff, you know? So, like with the sushi, doing it with brown rice, I'm trying to do things in a healthier way than, you know, just getting box mac and cheese or something. Because those have a lot of like bad ingredients, they're very processed. So this has literally just ingredients that I'm okay with. It's really good. It, you can taste the seafood. I mean, even though I mixed it in right at the end, the whole thing kind of tastes seafoody. I like it. I wish the shrimp were big. I should have left the shrimp. I cut them up. They were jumbo size, and I'm like, eh. I can't even get one. There we go. Mmm. Love me some shrimp, you guys. So yeah, this makes eight servings. And each serving is 600 calories exactly. Um, I'll put it up on the screen what one serving is. So not bad for you in terms of like macros. Mm. I wish I would have done like chicken instead. Just because I feel like I could have put a lot more in and it would have been more protein. But I didn't have any um, chicken on hand and this is the whole bag of shrimp. <laughs> But, I mean, I'm not going to put, like, two bags of shrimp in this because that's expensive. This will be my, my meals for the week. Because, mm. like, I figure when I make pasta, I might as well make a big batch. Because this took a while, to be honest. Like, mm. And, uh, yeah, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do a big batch. So, this is pretty good, guys. Um... Not the healthiest thing for me, but definitely the best way to do it with the uh, whole wheat pasta because that's a complex carb. Most of everything I used was like either organic or really good ingredients. And yeah, like, I mean, the ghee was grass-fed ghee, um, so it's natural fat. So it is like, this is mostly saturated fat. I don't think there's any unsaturated fat in this actually, but I'm okay with that. This is my breakfast. I work today until like 5 p.m. It is now 7 p.m. Cause like I was just start, like I didn't eat at all today cause I was just working. And I kept getting hungry and I'm like, oh, wait a little bit longer. Let me get through this stack of papers, you know, let me. And then I just wouldn't be hungry after that. So kind of, it would go away. So I'm like, perfect. I'm just gonna have a big pasta meal later. Mm. This was a food heavy vlog, wasn't it? I did the sushi, I did the octopus and all that, now this. At least we got outside, we got to the batting cages, so. I think I'm gonna call it here for the vlog, you guys. I think this is gonna be my last section, just cause, just cause. It's the weekend, and I wanna get this kinda like edited and posted for you guys. Cause as usual, I'm gonna be gaming all day Saturday. I'm so excited. Man, I need to fill you in on what, what's happening with my character in D&D. He almost died last week. Um, but it was it was a beautiful scene. I, me and my brother were talking. Actually, all three of us, all my siblings were talking um, when we were on the way to the house for vacation like a couple weeks ago. And I was saying that like therapy is great and all, but... I don't think it's like necessary for some people. And then like my brother was saying that everyone should get therapy, blah, blah, blah. This is just some backstory. And like, I'm like, okay, so like we talked about it. He made some good points. I'm like, yeah, I mean, it can't hurt. You know, therapy is great. It's just some people don't have people to talk to, whatever. Some people really need it because they have like really, you know, debilitating mental disorders, all that stuff. So of course, you know, therapy is great. But anyway, I like after um, playing a couple sessions, after that of D and D, I came home, told my brother, "You know how you were saying everyone should do therapy?" I was like, "No, everyone should do D and D. D and D is my therapy, you guys. It's like it's the most fun game you could ever play. You get to be whoever you want and do whatever you want, and you find things out about yourself that you maybe never would have otherwise." 
I will straight up say that D&D changed my life. Um, and D&D as it's played, typically, is not really what I'm talking about. My sibling uh, does the Dungeon Master thing, and they actually created this whole other system that's kind of like d and it's called Pith, and it's way more skill-based instead of like battle-focused. So you have like lockpicking skill, you have like um, deception, well you think there's deception in D&D, but you have like empathy, you have um, mental health points. So it's like really cool, it's like real life. Um, so that's what we play, I just call it D&D because, you know, no one has heard of Pith that I know of. Um, I don't think it's out there for sale yet or anything, but anyway, yeah, because I feel like because that game is set up that way where it's like more real life and because my sibling is such a genius at doing the DM stuff and coming up with this amazing story and playing into our characters and how our characters are developing and growing, it just makes it this like beautiful experience every single week and like overarching, just like gorgeous, beautiful story. Um, and to me, it's fun, it's like challenging, it's rewarding, but it's also kind of like therapy. <laughs> it's like free therapy, honestly. Um, if you get yourself a good DM, yeah. If you guys are interested in Dungeons and Dragons in general, check out, I think the streaming service is called Dropout. And the TV show that's on it that I would want you guys to watch is called Dimension 20, I believe. The guy, what's his name? Brennan Lee Mulligan, or Brennan Lee Mulligan. He is like my sibling. He's a genius at DMing, and they are playing D&D &D in that. They're not playing Pith like we are, but he still somehow makes it to where it's like therapy for these, for these people. Like, they go through things together. They find out things about themselves like their characters do but like they, i feel like they do too like the real people um he's a genius and i think if you watch that it'll like make you realize that D, &D can be for anyone it's not just for like nerds D, &D like everyone i feel like should give it a chance and play it um it's so freeing it's so beautiful <laughs> i'm gonna stop ranting about D, &D but is almost gone you guys I'm basically doing a mukbang here basically this is just a food vlog huh I'm fine with it hmm. I did buy some more stuff on Amazon this week um here one of them's right here I'm thinking we can test it out next week in my vlog this is the Hamilton Beach um it's like a grill like a George Foreman grill you know the one that closes so you can make like paninis. It's a panini grill, basically. So I've been really wanting one of those because like I've never really had a good way to do a panini or anything like that. Or like if I want to have a really charred, you know, like burrito that I char on both. It's like just easier to have that. So I want to give it a try. Mm. Pretty much done. I'm very full. 600 calories, not bad. Mm. And I managed to hide a lot of vegetables in that in that sauce. So that's always good. Um, I love like a fresh tomato, kind of like stir fry dish, sort of like, no, like stewing. And you kind of squish them up and like make a sauce out of that. It's so fresh and amazing. And then adding cheese to it is just even better. <laughs> Especially with all that butter and then oat milk. Oh my gosh. This was my first time trying oat milk ever. I have had almond milk in the past, um, but I really wanted a milk that didn't have any oils or like emulsifiers in it um, that are kind of like not good for your tummy. So I was looking at all of the um, ingredients in oat milk and this was a brand that I could get down with. Um, Oatly, I think that's like a, a popular one. I've seen at least commercials for it. Oatly has a ton of like bad ingredients. So if you're gonna get an oat milk, make sure, you know, make sure the first ingredient is like oats or water, like water oats, and that there's no oil in it. Um, and what I was gonna say is it actually, like I took a sip of it after I like put it in, you know, I like was like putting, I put four cups in the pot. And then I was about to put it away and I was like, I should probably try this, see what the flavor is like, you know. I probably should have tried it before I used it in a recipe, but 
So I took a little swig of it and I'm like, wow, that tastes just like, just it tastes like milk. I was pleasantly um, impressed by that. So, all right guys, I'm gonna call it here. Sorry if you're seeing this, this is a map of my city and my D&D game, which is actually D&D, it's not Pith. Cause D&D is probably just easier to run. It's less complicated, but anyway, this is a map of my city. Is it the right way up? It's this way. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I had a great time with you guys this week. Thanks for hanging out with me and eating a ton of great food. Sorry if the weird exotic food grossed you out earlier. Um, I hope, hopefully if it did, you skipped through it and you're here now. Um, but either way, I appreciate you guys for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you have not done so already. Um, hit the notification bell, like this video if you liked it. So give it that thumbs up. And what else? Throw me a comment down below. I forgot to do question of the week this week. I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> That's okay. We'll hit it next week. I feel like it's been a few weeks since I've done a question of the week, but yeah, still get, leave me a comment. Let me know what you guys are doing this week. Um, anything fun. If you've ever been to the batting cages, um, let me know if you have any recipes that use oat milk, um, for like making a sauce. I think I'm interested in that. Uh, I don't think oat milk really thickens up that much clearly. <laughs> That's why I kind of cooked the pasta in the milk and butter mixture because I was like, well, maybe the pasta, like the starches that come off the pasta, instead of using pasta water, it'll just, the starches will just come off into this sauce and it'll thicken up the sauce. I mean, it should have, but I don't think I gave it enough time and I didn't want to overcook my pasta because I was going to bake it. And then I was like, well, baking it might work because then, you know, the noodles, cause I didn't cook the noodles all the way. So I'm like, okay, the noodles are still going to soak up all that extra liquid, but that didn't quite happen. Um, but I am totally fine with it. It was delicious. Oh, I should have added some parsley or something or like some fresh basil. Oh, such a waste. Well, I have seven more servings of this, so I'm sure we'll do that for a future <laughs> future dinner. So anyways, guys, thank you so much. Um, like I said, throw me a comment down below. Give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. And otherwise, have a great week, and I will see you next Monday at 1030. Peace.